Thank you very much for that, Matt. See you a little bit later on. Yeah, have a lovely day. Now, it's uh, 8.51 this morning. Uh, we told you that we'd be talking about this a little bit earlier on in the programme. And it's, it's not an easy subject to discuss, is it? Because be told that you're suffering from a terminal illness is something that all of us would find devastating. But some people take it as a chance to change their lives for the better. And there's a new documentary which has followed a group of people who've done exactly that. Yeah, it's really inspirational. And the award-winning filmmaker Sue Bourne spoke to 12 people who'd been told that they were going to die. So let's see uh, what some of them said. When I look in the mirror, I don't see the same person. I laugh all the time. I've had um, a long life. Um, I'm ready to die. Do you ever wonder what you'd do if you were given a terminal diagnosis and told you may only have months to live? Being told you've got a terminal illness hasn't got to be a death sentence. It can actually be a live sentence. I don't ever like to say that I'm dying. I'm not dying. I'm living. I set out to find people who knew death was round the corner, but had chosen to make the most of the time they had left. My life isn't about motor neurone disease. What's it about? It's about going out and having fun. It's an incredibly positive programme, despite the subject matter. Well, documentary maker Sue Bourne joins us now on the sofa. Good morning Hello. to you. And speaking to us live from our home in Surrey is Lisa Keach, who appears on the programme. Lisa, thank you so much for your time this morning. I mean, when we were, were mentioning that we were going to speak to you on the programme, it's, 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 it is a difficult subject for many people to talk about. I, I know you're incredibly positive and your family are, are positive about that as well, but that, that moment when you have to tell your, your two daughters and your husband, what is that like? What do you actually say and when does the positivity for you begin? Well, my husband was with me when we got the news, um, but we did have to tell our, our girls when we came home. And that was, you know, it's, it's a conversation you don't expect to have in your life, really. And one of them asked me, you know, how bad is it? And I said, well, it's as bad as it can get, really, because it's terminal. But what we have to do is make the most of everything you know you this is a challenge you can't give up at, at school you mustn't go off the rails because if you do that you let this disease take your future it will probably take me but it's up to you if it destroys your future so just carry on your life and just overcome it and so i suppose the positivity really kicked in straight away and, and what difference has it made, Lisa? Because you are incredibly inspirational for lots of people out there who perhaps have family members or friends who, who are suffering. You, you know, you are a big inspiration and, and incredibly positive. Where, where do you think that comes from and what difference is it making? Well, I've always been a glass over full person, <laughs> never <laughs> half empty or, or, you know, it's always been bubbling over. And um, I just think that every day is a blessing, really, and I've always thought that. Um, and you've got to make the most of everything. Um, as far as this nasty little disease is concerned, if I let it dent my every day, if I, and I let it control me, um, and I'm miserable and sad, and I inflict mm. that on other people, then not only is it interfering with my health, it's interfering with my daily life, and it wins, and I won't let it. Mm. So Lisa's um, attitude is, is incredible. What made you, as a, as a documentary maker and a filmmaker, want to make this programme? Lots of reasons. I mean, I've had cancer, mm. so I've had my nose sort of squashed up about, uh, against mortality. I also think as a society, we don't talk enough about it, and everybody just sort of shoves it away. And you assume, as I did, as everybody tends to, you're going to have a long life and it's all going to be fine. And I think quite a few people died close to me, and also there were famous people died last year, and it, it was the timing was right. Mm because you look at how people approach it and you think there's no right way and there's no wrong way but maybe if you just make the most of the time that you've got left it'll be that bit less hard so that's what i'd really set out not to make a film about how you face your own death but much more about how you make the most of the time that you have left and people like lisa and everyone in the film actually was just they were wonderful they how were did, inspirational how did you find them then Oh, months of research. <laughs> I mean, it, it was, a, I've been, it's taken a year to make the film mm. because there are lots of people with terminal illnesses, but not an awful lot of them want to sit in front of a camera and yeah. ask all sorts of questions. So, I mean, we went to charities, blogs, 
I did radio interviews and actually Lisa held, heard me doing an interview on the radio and she got in touch with the radio station and said, well, I've got terminal cancer, but I'm loving every minute of life. And you just think, well, yeah, this is great. Mm. And, you know, some people might find it difficult and they will not. Everyone can be like that. But Lisa said to me, if you've got one weekend left, why spend that weekend being sad about all the others you're not going to have? She said, it's a no brainer. One weekend, be happy. So I took my inspiration from Lisa. <laughs> well, you, you even in, inspiring Sue this morning, Lisa. I, I wonder, you, you said that was hard <laughs> to tell your daughters. If your attitude is so positive, have you, have you seen their attitude maybe change a little bit? Because obviously at some stage they are going to lose their mum. Well, they've been dealing with cancer since they were 13. So nearly five years now, that's sort of become the norm I think in some ways in that although it doesn't control our life it is a a part of our life and I think they have used it as a complete focus they you know they first found out that um, the, the drugs were sort of waning and I had a terminal diagnosis as they were about to take their GCSEs and they came out with A stars and A's and I applaud them because I think with that hanging over your head, to achieve that is remarkable. So they are focused, they are positive, mm. they're incredibly strong girls. Um, and we are very, very proud of them and for them. And one thing I would say to, to anyone in this situation, you've got a choice. You can either lay down, and your family can lay down, or you can think, no, we've got a life, we're still going. And, um, you know, we've got every day to live and we've got to make the most of it. And I, I do think whether you're in this position or not, you should be doing that. You know, you should be living a wonderful life, happy and kind, come what may. So inspirational. Mm. Lisa, thank you so much for your time this morning. I really appreciate you talking to us. And uh, congratulate your daughters as well on brilliant yeah, results. That's amazing. Incredible. Sue, so, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. And uh, you can watch that for yourselves. Uh, a Time to Live with Lisa and a number of other people suffering with terminal cancer. Uh, BBC Two, uh, Wednesday evening, isn't it, at 9 o'clock this week? Yeah, thank you.